Now to our two-part look at Yemen, the impoverished Arabian Peninsula nation, suddenly in the international spotlight as an al-Qaeda haven. Authorities there arrested three men today in a security crackdown aimed at rooting out militants. It began after investigators found a link between Yemen and the bombing suspect. Jonathan Rugman of Independent Television News reports from the country's capital. It's a long way from here to Detroit, but it was in Sanaa's sprawling streets that a plot to blow up a passenger jet on Christmas Day may well have been planned. Yemen, ancestral homeland of Osama bin Laden himself, is once again on al-Qaeda's front line. And the big burly man with the balding pate and beneficent smile knows all about it. For Nasser al-Bahri, alias Abu Jandal, is the former bodyguard to Osama bin Laden himself. But do you miss Osama bin Laden? Yes, I miss him. You miss him? Yeah. A martyr, he says, a man to be loved. I've often said I love Osama bin Laden more than my own father. We shared many experiences and he defends the Islamic nation. He doesn't like killing. Mr. al-Bari was one of many Yemenis serving alongside bin Laden in the Afghan mountains in the late 1990s, where he earned the nickname The Killer. After jail time in Yemen, he now works here as a business consultant, but he's still proud of the leg wound the al-Qaeda leader often bandaged up for him. And though he's retired from jihad, his sympathy for the latest generation is hard to disguise. Do you have any understanding as to why this Nigerian would allegedly attempt to blow him, himself and other people up uh, on a plane heading towards Detroit? I wish the question wasn't so naive. Britain and America are in Iraq and in Afghanistan. They intervene in the affairs of Islamic nations. There are a million people out there, like the Nigerian. Omar Farouk Abdul Mutalab, the Nigerian student with explosives in his underpants who put al-Qaeda back on the map. He studied Arabic last summer at this language school in Sana'a. It seems a sane and civilized place of learning now tainted by the actions of one notorious pupil, whose teachers say he was smart, the best in the class, not a man to blow up a plane mid-flight. Like the whole world, I was wrong about him. Amsterdam Airport was wrong about him. He was always smiling. Smiling like the friendly former bodyguard of the world's most wanted man who now lives quietly in this dirt-poor capital city where al-Qaeda still inspires young men to wage war against the West.